Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Green Room Podcast. I'm Matthew Bruni, and joining me once again is Colin Mitchell. Colin, how are you doing today? I'm just every day coping with the fact that I'm probably going to be bald. So Yes. Well, for we don't want to spoil it now. Stay tuned to the end of the podcast. But, or maybe not the end, maybe the middle. I don't know. Um, it is 28-24. I lead. Yeah, I have to win out. Colin needs to go 5-0 and this week in order to uh, secure... Uh, the win. Uh, is it possible? Yes. Has it ever happened? No. Nobody's ever gone five and zero in pick them before. Colin will be looking to be the first. Let's see if you man. Can do it. If you lost on that, that would just be an absolute brutal hit to the ego. I'm not even worried. I'm not gonna lie. I don't think. Uh, I, I I wouldn't be worried. Either. I don't think you have it in the tank. I don't think it's it's so hard. Now, if I did, you would have earned it. Would've, I would have. It would have been earned. Yeah. You would have earned it. So, um. But let's talk North Texas versus UAB first. Um, this is a game between two four and seven teams, two mm-hmm. teams that have I don't want to say underachieved because I think the standards, the expectations were fairly modest for both teams coming in. Trent Dilfer takes over at UAB. He comes in. He's very. He's got the you know the bravado. Got the I don't want to call it arrogance, but he very much came in saying, "Hey, I'm going to do this, 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 and this," and for UAB, and he is taking over. You know, a program that under Bill Clark was routinely in the com- in the Conference USA title contention, you know, was very, very reliable, uh, had an identity, all that stuff. He takes over and it's only year one. You know, maybe he does great there. Who knows? But uh, four and seven overall, three and four in conference play. So more conference wins than than North Texas. But I think. Looking at this schedule for UAB, and I, I I watched a couple of UAB games. Um, I think that the it was the Memphis one. I watched the first half of that, and they were tied at twenty one, and then they lose forty five to twenty one. But my main thing with UAB is it feels like what North Texas, where North Texas was at with Seth Luttrell, in the sense that they're beating the teams that they should beat, and then the games that they lose are all by fourteen twenty one. 28 12 yeah. 21 24 like they got blo- i mean navy blew them out by 25 like yeah, all the losses are blowouts <laughs> yeah so that's where i'm like okay i've seen this before you're beating the teams you're supposed to beat temple and you know nice winning against fau and usf but like the rest of the games you're getting your doors kicked in so you know is that the sign of maybe a shade you know first year coach and whatnot sure but uh, from north texas perspective North Texas at home. This game's at one o'clock on Saturday. Um, I think North Texas is favored right now, and I think North Texas deserves to be favored. I think North Texas comes into this game in my mind as as the favorite. What are your overall thoughts? Yeah, I can I completely agree. I think UAB UAB's conference record and them having the same record as North Texas is not indicative of how each of these teams have performed thus far this season. Um, UAB, I think, has I feel like has underperformed. I, mean, I feel like on Twitter, and I could be wrong on this. I've seen people complain about. Uh, them whereas North Texas I feel like you know you have you have a lot of potential here so um, my overall thoughts are that I think North Texas is the better team here UAB lost to I want to I mean some of the bad losses Georgia Southern isn't a bad team but you know to lose to Georgia to allow 49 points to Georgia Southern and lose that game is bad Louisiana has not been great this year to lose to Louisiana 21 41 early in the season it's not good um, and then the Navy loss is the real jarring one because we Navy, we know how tough it can be to beat Navy and on the road, but six to 31, like yeah. <laughs> not even competitive yeah. in that game. Yeah. Now the win over Temple last week, you know, give them some credit. Uh, Warner was back for Temple. So it was at least a competent Temple team, but we know that they're very average, um, if below average team in, in the Americans. So I come into this game saying, all right. UAB still has uh, Jermaine Brown, uh, who continues a long line of successful running backs at UAB. I mean, we go back uh, basically since they got reincarnated in 2017, they've had good <laughs> running backs. Yeah. Uh, Spencer Brown last year. This now is Jermaine Brown, who's been consistent for them. So they have a bit of a running game. Jacob Zeno, I know he's from San Antonio, uh, was at Baylor, transfers to UAB. Um kind of just is what it is at quarterback um and offensively they don't really have any dynamic playmakers uh besides brown so mm-hmm. it is concerning right 
if we if we say UAB, like if this was UAB in the past five, six years, I would have been like, okay, North Texas has no shot because they're not stopping the run. Right. Uh, Brown is averaging less than five yards per tip, uh, per carry this year, so he's not as, um, you know, he's not as consistent, or maybe the offensive line is not as consistent. But still, against Temple, he rushed for 153 yards on 20 carries um, with a touchdown. So very much a good running attack. Um, is that kind of the main concern going into this one? Is North Texas – defense stopping the run yeah i mean but i think that's a concern every game yeah so i mean at this point it's just a thing that has to happen every game what i do want to see more so than the run is is north texas's uh offensive line doing a bit better to protect chandler rogers i think that's going to be more of a decider and and how the game uh ends up playing out than than the run um just because every team has gotten the run and they've just kind of dealt with it yeah i'm looking up um I think an interesting stat for a lot of teams is uh, tackles for loss. Let's see. Where Against you the Temple, they had two sacks and three tackles for a loss. Yeah, so I'm I'm looking up where they rank in the country. Oh, in the country, okay. Um, yeah, their defense is a far cry from where it was, dude. Remember, right. remember, uh, M- Milano, the big DT that they had. That yeah sacked mason fine like endlessly and that in his last game of his career (laughs) um yeah uab now ranks 126 in the country and tackles for loss only 3.8 per game so the hope um north texas is just above that 4.2 tackles for loss per game so we're looking at two two defenses they don't get in the backfield they don't really create havoc uh we already knew that about north texas but uab in a similar vein this is not like i said this is not a bill clark team this is right. not a team that is going to disrupt you up front that is really able to to dominate you. And so the hope is, like you said, North Texas offensive line doesn't get, you know, holding penalties, doesn't uh, have blown assignments here to where Rodgers has time. Because we've seen consistently if Rodgers has time, this offense is borderline unstoppable in the American. Yeah, right? it's a done deal. Yeah, it's like the lo- like the struggles have come when they weren't able to block UTSA. They weren't able to block SMU. Like – that's when Rodgers maybe misses a throw or two that he always makes. Um, but, I mean, I, I even Navy, obviously, Navy had eight sacks against North Texas. So if as long as you're not allowing five, six sacks or yeah. you're not allowing constant pressure, Chandler Rodgers will win you the game. Exactly. It's, it's just taking care of him. That's the main goal. I, I think that's a, that's a good point. The hope is, you know, UAB's front is not as potent as we've become used to uh, – UAB's front being um I guess what do you uh, what do you want to see like is is offensively is it just outside of Rodgers do you have more faith in the running game or the receivers making plays because the receivers are coming off of a shaky performance yeah the receivers the last few games have been I mean you had that fumble a couple weeks ago you've had another drop in the end zone a couple weeks ago um yeah the receivers recently have been a little rough um I think that it's hard. I don't think that's the mean. I think that's the receivers are better than that. I mean, especially Jamari Macklin. I don't think he drops a touchdown pass like that in the end zone again. Um, so I think that they'll be fine. I do think the running backs though are on another level. I think we, they finally, they've been, they've been really good all year, but I think especially these last couple games, we've seen Attaway really kind of step out and, 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 and be just yeah. as good, if not more effective than a day. And unfortunately it came, you know, in the last three or four games of the season, but, um, I really like that uh, Oscar has been really great. And I think going to this last game, there's although they're not playing for a bowl game, they have a lot of motivation to continue this thing in the next year. I mean, when you think about it, this is the, this is the only bowl game they haven't really been playing for since, what, 2016? Army? Well, that, no, they made all but one. I guess it was 2019. 2019, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think all of these guys want to prove something that they're better than, than, than what the record suggests. So I think that the running backs and the receivers are both going to be perfectly, perfectly fine. I think there's a lot of motivation to, to keep them from, from, you know, not uh, being, yeah. uh, you know what I'm saying? Flat. Complacent. There we go. Yeah. I have a couple questions. We'll get to the, in a question uh, in a minute, but like Iowa day has 885 yards, 125 carries, 7.1 yards per yeah. carry. I think I saw a stat that he is, uh, for his career, the the most rushing uh, yards per rush in North Texas history. Like he is, it's incredible because he was a, like a former what was it Division three or JUCO guy? I think it was Division two. 
then I I thought he he walked on in North Texas, and I think he just we he we deserve he deserves like all the praise right now. Comes in as a freshman, and I remember saying like, all right, this guy is cool, but you know Oscar Attaway is here, and all these guys are here. Right. And he's just continued to produce. Yeah, last year, 7.2 yards per carry on 12 um, in 12 games on 112 attempts. This year, 7.1 on 125 attempts. And, like, sure, if you want to dock him for only having eight touchdowns over the last two years, sure. But, like, on on two offenses where it's very much been apparent, Austin Ani throwing the ball a ton last year and now Chandler Rogers throwing the ball a ton this year, it's like the offensive line and Iowa Day have – just been incredibly consistent in terms of ripping off like seven, eight, nine yards to carry. And that's, that's huge. So I do want to give him his credit. Um, I think he can come back another year. I'm not sure exactly. He's uh, only I played have... three years at North Texas. And if he's played one, really, before it's that, only that's... three years. Yeah. Three years at North Texas. And then before that, it was probably a COVID year. So I'm assuming yeah, he's he has a one junior. More he's his one more year. Yeah. So I'm assuming he has one more. That's crazy. Oscar. I'm assuming. Oscar is a... Okay, look, I think Oscar has one more. Here's why. They both have one more. But Oscar's been in North Texas for five years. That's but I think true. They, but it, because he has the injury year and he has the COVID year. Yep. So the last two years, he's been healthy uh, and played nine, 11 games. But before that, it was uh, played in three games as a true freshman. So got redshirted there. Um, Or was that before the four-game retro rule? I don't remember. But regardless, he didn't play in 2021, and 2020 was a COVID year. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you get both of them back. It's going to be crazy. I mean, to, to your point about uh, a day, I mean, in conference this year, it's seven seven 7.1 yards per carry. Oscar, 7.6 yards per carry. Like, these running backs are insane. And then a day, especially, like you said, he breaks off those long runs. Like, the touchdowns, I don't think, for him, I mean – Sure, he only has four, but he changes the game in so many ways, getting long runs when you don't expect to get them. Yeah, no, he is. He's awesome. So shout out to Iowa Day um, and what he's been able to do here. Shout out to Oscar Attaway, because like you said, he's looked better as the season's gone on. So credit to him there. I, I just I think this offense is I also looked up. Um, I also looked up on the did I just delete it um, NCA's page. Uh, Tackles for loss allowed. Yeah. UAB is second to last in the country in tackles for loss allowed. So they're not getting in the backfield on defense and they're allowing people in the backfield on their offense. So this North Texas defense can be aggressive at times. Like Mason Richards had a good game last week, right? I yeah. think there are times where this defense can get aggressive and get home. So there, there's a lot on paper here that I'm looking at UAB and saying, I don't. The only thing I think UAB has in this matchup is the run game. Yeah, it's gonna I, have to I don't run. even think that's better than North Texas. I just think it's no, 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 no. But yeah, but against North Texas defense, yeah, <laughs> like you know, relative to who they're playing against. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I think that's the only advantage is if Jermaine Brown gets 200 yards on 20 carries, then it's like, all right, what are we doing here? Then, then you're in trouble, you're in another shootout. And I'm not, I don't think this defense is going to hold UAB down per se, but there's a lot of signs saying, hey. North Texas can win this game by two two scores, and that would be that would be a, a big step in the right direction. I think that would be an awesome note to close this season on because I, outside of the first two games of the year, I think this season has been an overwhelming success. I completely agree. Now I, mean, I don't want to say that I don't want to say that, and then they lose the game. But <laughs> at this moment, eleven games in, this season's been an overwhelming success, success outside of the first two games. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think the biggest thing for me, especially, is seeing that Eric Morris actually makes a difference on offense. Like, we weren't sure, especially when Stone started the season, we weren't sure if this quarterback yeah. whisperer was actually a quarterback whisperer. And Chandler Rogers is if one of, if not the best group of five quarterback right now, statistically. Um, I mean, the offense is crazy. And not only that, we've seen improvement week by week. And, you know, there's a couple times where you're like, okay, well, this this sucks. Um, especially defensively, but I think that overall you you got to be ecstatic about where this program is moving forward. And conversely, you have UAB, whereas I don't think you, if you're a UAB fan, you're not really looking at this team with the same record as North Texas going, oh yeah, we're really excited about the future and have all these things on the up and up. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's uh, pick them. Pick them. Sure. For all the marbles. 
Do you have a? Did you did you want to do the debate topics afterwards? No, I, I think we can do it afterwards. I think okay. while we're while we're on UAB, we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm good. Let's do it. There. You want me to go first? It's up to you, man. You just I think. Let, let me let me know. do this. Let me let me do this. Let me do this. Let me do this. Let me do this. <laughs> so, uh, I'm getting the score prediction first, though. Yeah, you can get the score prediction first. Um, I'm just gonna price this right to you, though. Just know that. Um. For everyone that doesn't know, uh, we're going to go bald. Whoever loses goes bald. I'm currently down four points, 28-24, and I have to have a 5-0 and week. Has never happened before. Probably will never happen, but we're going to give it our best shot. Um, so I'm going to open up my first my first um, pick them spread line thing with North Texas sacks over under three and a half. I was hoping you were gonna say four and a half. I was like, "Oh, I can." Oh, there's no way I'd see four, four and a half. I'm taking it all day. Oh man, let's look up some numbers here. Let's look up some numbers. Oh, he's me now, Bruni's Bruni. There's a lot of the line for Bruni here. Sacks. Where's sacks? Here we go. UAB has allowed thirty sacks in eleven games. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'm gonna take the under. Under three and a half. That could be it right there. It could that be it. We could, could just it. wrap it up right we there. We don't need it up right there. Yeah. Listen, I got to win on something crazy, right? Like it's not, this isn't going to be some, <laughs> some, sp- I got to go crazy. I mean, that's just what has to happen. Um, all right, I'll go again. Um, let's do UAB. Um, trying to find out where, there it is. Let's do UAB yards per carry. Uh, let's do over under if they get sacks, they're going to have lower yards per carry. Let's go. Yes. Good point. It's a good point right there. Let's go. Colin's thinking. Colin is thinking. I, I, I need on. this, guys. I need Hold this. On. He's, he's factoring in sacks into yards per rush. But Jacob Zeno runs. Does he? I mean, he got sacked three times against Temple, I believe, twice against Temple, and he still had 23 rushing yards. Um. Yeah, he does I mean, run a little bit. You're right. Let's go five point over under five point three and a half, I guess. No, five point two and a half. Five point two. Oh, because we can't push. <laughs> yeah, we can't push. <laughs> five point two five. I mean, I guess technically they could get five point two five yards per carry. Yeah, but we don't we don't go to that decimal point. We round up or down. So No, but I'm saying they could in theory, Colin, five point two five is a legitimate decimal that they could oh, you're saying it. We'll yeah, round up thing. It only three. Goes to if it's five point two five, are we rounding up? That's I mean, question. that's that's the rule in math class that five mm. always rounds up and four always rounds down. So, mm, okay. I mean, it's ESPN says five points, five point one digits. So five point two five, over under. They had five point six against Temple. Five yards per carry. Yeah. I'm gonna. Okay, I'm in an interesting position here because I do agree with you. The sacks should. Bring it down. It ruined me against one of our pickums because Chandler Rogers got sacked for like twelve yeah. yards and it took my now, life away. I think I could play both sides here. You could. I took the under sacks, so in theory, I should be taking the over yards per carry because I don't mm. think the sacks. Mm. But if you play both sides, then we just split something anyway. Then you you just win. Give me the under. The under five point two five. Playing both sides of this thing, one of them is gonna hit. Both, if they get ten sacks, and then con- then I'm gonna be right with the under here. That's what I'm way I'm looking at this. Okay, all right, your turn. And that was UAB yards per carry. Yes. Okay. Calling you two North Texas defensive props. He's looking for some edge there. Um, Unfamiliar territory. <laughs> I'll, I'll go. I'll go with the. I'll go with the fun one again. Okay. Chandler Rogers over under two hundred ninety nine point five yards. Two hundred nine. <laughs> Bruni just wants to use this one just because of last. Yeah, time. just because I got burned on it last time. Go ahead, Colin. Where, what is he? Over what is he under two ninety nine? Oh man, this is tough. He ended with two ninety four last time. Oh, yeah. trust me, I know. I was, I, I was there. I was there. Lord, that was painful. I could have. It should be over right now. Way. That's what. I shouldn't even. No, be stressing he, hasn't, this. he hasn't hit three hundred yards since Memphis. It's easy under then. I'm gonna go under. Okay. I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait for Chandler Rogers to throw for 400 yards. 
I mean, I hope he does. I mean, I, I've, I've accepted going bald, but I, if, it would be so hilarious if I came back in one minute. <laughs> okay. Um, last one. I'll, I'll do another offensive one since you did defense. I almost did Jamoy Macklin passing touch uh, receiving touchdowns again, but I'm not doing that. I will do Jamoy Macklin receiving yards. Actually, no, no, no. I'm sorry. Ooh. That that pairs up with Rogers too easily. Okay. All right, yeah, Jamoy Macklin separated. receptions. Receptions. Yep. Oh man, what a what a thing we haven't done. Flat receptions. He has 40 on the year. 11. That's four and a half almost per game. I'll set it at four and a half. Jamar Macklin over under four and a half receptions. He hasn't had more than that since US UTSA. It's only three weeks ago. I understand it's only three weeks ago, Bruni, but we gotta we gotta really think this through. It went four three four two six six eight six five mm. two two. Mm. So started started with averaging like three and a half through the first four weeks. But putting up monster numbers. That's crazy. What a crazy stat line. Four receptions for 122 yards and two touchdowns. Dude, it's wow. God. <laughs> That's insane. God. <laughs> All right. Oh, Imagine if Derek Porter was on this team. You put it at four and a half? Four and a half. Give me the under. Ooh, bold take. The, I, think we're throwing, I think we're throwing this thing around to other receivers. Okay. I mean, I, I, I have to. I have to do something crazy. I need to know what the odds are that you win this. Like, there has to be like, <laughs> yeah, where's the prop? One in a hundred. Like, there's no getting all four props right and the score right. Oh my god! Now, what could throw an interesting loop is if I got the score right exactly. Yes, and got that's, the two points, but still lost two. one of these. That is worth two for those yep. who don't know. It's never happened before. Again, a lot of things have never happened before. But yeah. Colin is banking on. I need something to catch now. lightning in a bottle. Is what I need to do. He's gonna go buy a lottery ticket as well while he does this. All right. Okay. Uh, you wanted to score first, right? Yeah, I do. I want to score first. If you want the information? Take... The spread is plus three for. Yeah. Or plus... yeah, you get it. It's three. Give me North Texas. I feel like I've said this score before. And I don't really like reusing scores, but it feels. Score Yeah, I should do some random stuff, right? I mean, you might you need really to do wanna, that. If you really want to choke away the game, you might need to do that. Yeah, I'll yeah. go conservative. You're right. You're right. Um, North Texas wins this game. Thirty-eight, thirty. God damn it! Had to pick my score that I wanted. All right. So, are you picking? You can do one of two things here. I think. I think. I'm going to pick probably 38 points still for North Texas and Ooh. then pick a different score for UAB. Okay, so you're just – okay. I 38 was the number. I was like, this is the sweet spot. This is Well, it. Colin, you said you're going to have to go crazy. You could pick UAB to win. To try to I actually – but the problem is I don't genuinely think that, and I would be having to root against North Texas and Chandler Rogers. Plus, I also picked things that help North Texas. Okay, so um, – I, I can't mix it up here. There's no more mixing I, it up. Okay. I have to win this. You okay? I'm trying to think of how it would go. We're going to score. Yeah, we're going to score not a lot of points in the first half like we always do. Oh, well, we didn't. We did get Tulsa, though. So I think it goes field goal, field goal. Oh, my God. Touchdown, <laughs> halftime. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. What is that? Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. So 21 plus 13. 34 points. Oh, it's got to be more than that. That's I don't just... know. You said 34, my guy. 34. Roll with it. All right. 34 27, North Texas. 34 to 27, North Texas. All right. You, we're going to get a push in this. I already know we are. So, wait, is that the same point spread? I did eight. You did seven. So, I guess we could take if it's a North Texas win by seven or less. You take if it, it. Yeah. And then we'll just go because if it was the same, I'd I change it. Do you want me to change it? Is it not good enough? Is it not no, far enough for you? No, okay. I just want to make sure. We'll I just figure it out. Sure. If you, I sure. mean, look, you're not getting all four of the pick them right. Zero so, chance. <laughs> but Zero. if you do, if you do get all four of them right, there is a high chance, you know, we could push if UAB wins. That's a push. If we pushed, if we pushed the score, that means we'd be tied. Yes, I know, Colin. That's what I'm saying. Do we need a penalties? 
uh tiebreaker again no <laughs> i forgot we did that <laughs> no let's do it let's do it oh, we have to because i guess we do have to i guess we do have to yeah okay so in the event of a tie last year bruni had to eat the hot chip off of penalties was it north texas penalties or total game yeah. penalties i think i don't think it was north texas penalties or something like that um all right we'll do north texas penalties what over under this has been a very low penalized team this year so i almost want to set at a very low number um i don't have the stats in front of me i got them i don't yeah. know if you want them but i got them okay no you don't have to read them to me i'll just set a line right now actually no you <sighs> Okay, I'll set a line. I can set. I can. I can tell you what, what it is if you want per game. Do you want to know what per game? It's it's low. It's probably four. It's four point like four. Yeah. Home game in the last three though, it's six. It's been up, right? Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm thinking. Uh, I'm I'm factoring. I'm factoring all this into it. I mean, we just gotta go over. I mean, really, if it gets to this point. We are in DEFCON 5 right now. <laughs> yeah, you are freaking out. Over under penalties, four and a half. Four and a half on North I mean, Texas. That, that, that's the line. That's the line. I'll let me right. go. Uh, Take the over. Let me go under. It's a home game, right? Yep. Yeah, they have four at home. All right. All right. We'll see if Eric Morris comes through one time there. And that's it. That's a very complicated and convoluted pick em system that we just put in place. But here I'm, we not are. Even gonna, I'm not even going to put the penalties on the graphic just because it's it shouldn't get there. If it gets there, if it gets there, the listeners of this podcast will be like, oh, <laughs> oh, 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 we're here. Yeah. 